Yeah, I was in a branch of Lidl, uh, that wonderful German supermarket that sells a very limited range of food brands. Everything is their own brand, plus the middle aisle, it has all the weird stuff that you don't expect to find in a supermarket. Uh, if you don't know Lidl, or it's very similar uh, competitor Aldi, um, they were known as a hard discounter. Uh, they sell limited number of brands, mostly their own brand stuff, and then down the middle they have what they call their special buy section. So every week they'll get some unusual thing in for sale, generally with a theme. So one week it might be DIY goods, which are really good quality actually. Another week might be clothes, or then they'll get they'll go on a flight of fancy and say, "What do people in Dublin need? Ski gear, diving gear, um, stuff for putting out in your garden when it's sunny, which we never get any sun here." But anyway, um, they do have a discount basket for stuff they don't sell. So this must have came from their security range, three forty nine, and I was um, taking it apart and <laughs> made a complete pig's ear of it because I was curious to see how the shock sensor worked. And the theory of a shock sensor is quite simple, really. It's um, inside it. Well, this okay, a cheap shock sensor uh, uh, work generally has there's some sort of physical movement inside it, which brings two con uh, conductors together or apart, depending on the setup. This one here has three pins, which is unusual. But after a bit of investigating, I discovered that actually uh, what you have is two circuits, and they're identical. So you can have the first leg and the middle leg. Or the middle leg and the second leg, uh, they do exactly the same thing. Depending if you use the first or the set or the third leg, the difference is the circuits. There seems to be two circuits uh, that are switched out using the sensitivity switch. Um, so I think they were trying to do that to sort of use a cheaper, uh, cheaper controller chip. So that instead of having to use an IC with some sort of code in it, um, the whole thing is just basically resistors and capacitors, and it just. There's probably a different resist, a different um, set of components that are set to detect a different level of resistance coming out of here. Because the way it works is that, well, this one, uh, there's constantly a, a current being passed through. And I measured it and it came out at uh, 0.3 of an ohm. But whenever there's a shock, the resistance increases, which I find strange. So I'm assuming that uh, the, the way this works is that there is a constantly a circuit open. But when you shock it, something is pulled away. Perhaps there's a spring that has several parts of it, several bits of its coil pressed against the side. And then when you shock it, it several of those uh, rings are moved away, and that therefore increases the resistance, possibly. But I I might actually come back and try and slice this open at some point. But it's quite small, and I wanted to go out and do it properly. So anyway, uh, I was going. To, I wanted to show you this working, and I wanted to show you the resistance going through the multimeter, but I made a complete pig's ear of it. That's weird. The light just flashed, even though there's no battery connected to it. So there's obviously the the, the, the capacitor discharging into it. Anyway, so instead, I'm going to show you this. This I salvaged from our home burglar alarm system which was upgraded and replaced, so don't, if anyone gets any ideas, don't be coming round. Um, and I assumed, because I could hear a rattle inside it, that there was some sort of pin pressing, you know, that would hit against the sides, and the, ins the sides were lined with conductive material. Turns out, it's actually a lot more simple than that. Now, this was sealed up, and it also has an orientation, uh, so it was pointing upwards, so these two pins, these two rods were at the bottom. And the way it works is... <laughs> Um, it normally sits like that, and it would be inside a unit with a circuit board and some some uh, logic. And it's a wireless unit, so it can be attached anywhere. Um, you put that in, that would be in there. And I'll put the other one in as well, because they both behave the same. And you'll be able to see it a bit more clearly. Uh, so it's normally sitting in, an orient in its normal orientation, and it's make a connection. But when something hammers it, or bangs it, it'll suddenly temporarily tip off and onto only one of these pins and the circuit the connection is broken so there's constantly a current being passed through it and I measured it earlier I'll measure it again just to show you um, it should be about 0.2 of an ohm there we go oh, it came off make sure I got the orientation right well, there you go, point 0.1, point 0.2, there you go. Tilt it over, you break the circuit. Bring it back. Oh, 
hard to keep the pin the pins on. There we go. Circuits back. Point two. Tilt it. Lose it. Now, of course, I'm interfering a bit with it. There will be finger pressing in, but the simple the process is simple. Uh, if, the, if the circuit is broken, that triggers the alarm. So it's actually you know, quite an ingenious, simple, and cheap design. Uh, there is, if you go into likes of RS components, Foreign L, Avnet, or even the Chinese websites, uh, there's hundreds of shock, shock and vibration sensors to choose from, and some of them are quite. Um, some of them are. Most of them are actually have quite sophisticated, uh, and would use a pin or some. Or actually would use uh, special materials that there's no moving parts as such, but there is a material that um, when it comes under pressure or strain, it uh, the resistance changes. I know others would use the piezoelectric or piezo piezo. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that piezoelectrics effect, where you got two plates pressed against each other, and if you, if you squeeze them or bend them or twist them or shock them, that changes that generates a, a charge which is then picked up. Uh, but I've never actually seen anything as simple as this, which I'm actually quite impressed with. It's cheap. So whoever building these burglar alarm systems managed to come up with something that works and is very, very cheap to implement. That would also probably explain why it was so freaking hard to get this end off. I mean, it was like, uh, it was actually welded on using plastic welding. So it looked like it was screwed on, but I had to actually pick away at it until I could get it off. So there you go. That is the anatomy of a very basic shock sensor, which is, I'm impressed by so there you go. Cheers.